Hello there, everyone. So we are going to work on the next step, which is the cover. This is Kathy with Paper Phenomenon. We've been working on our moving parts layout and it's turning out, it has turned out really, really good. I'm so happy with it. I want to remind you what we've been doing here. We, we took a 12 by 12 layout. So here is the inspiration layout. I got this layout from Page Maps Puzzles website. Um, and it's this really nice layout, room for one, two, three, four, five, six photos, uh, quite a few layers here, and I turned it into this. Good morning. There's a, the sun is out that is totally messing up all my lights, but I'm here. Uh, so here's the layout. Here's what I did. So I did one, two, three, four, five, six photos in this one. Did it up with some um, um, really cool embellishments from the Remember the Magic collection. And all of this information will be linked in the description box below. But what Moving Parts is about this. Are you ready, folks? So everything moves. Moving parts. All right. Everything opens. This here is a pocket. All right. For more photos then it moves some more all right are you ready for this guys so this opens up so that opens up like so it gives you room for i put embellishments here but you can put a photo or photos you have this oversized pocket here for photos you have this area here for photos uh there is a tuck space here and room for another embellishment or a photo here if you want to look at those super cute little that headband there how adorable that is this closes up like that and ready for it one more time so this is what you get with moving parts it's a layout but it moves the parts move you open and you get to add more and more and more it just creates a lot of real estate for more photos. So this is an excellent minis stories project because if you are like me and you do not take a lot of pictures for a specific event, then this is a good way to present them. So here's the other side of that. So this one opens up like this. All right, look at those photos, how gorgeous. This one has yet another pocket right here. Okay, so that opens up, that slips out, excuse me, and then we have the same deal here with room for more photos and that gorgeous, gorgeous paper, and then it opens up again right here, all right? So look at these gorgeous pictures. Did I tell you there's room for an 8x10? This is just a little placeholder for an 8x10 if you wanted to do that, or you can do an array of smaller photos here. That is entirely up to you. So lots of room. Now what we're gonna do with this is create a cover, all right? Because this does not get slipped into a sleeve. Uh, like a traditional 12 by 12 layout would, this is going to have its own little cover. Uh, and I say little, but it is not little. So if you look at your cutting guide, if you'd like to make this project along with me, there is a cutting guide associated with it. It's there. The link to the cutting guide is in the description box below along with the paper collection and everything that you need to make this project. I am using my brand of chipboard. It's Maser, Maker Basics chipboard, and I'm using my P3 tape. I cannot stress enough how amazing this tape is. It's a fabric-based tape. It is not to be confused with masking tape, or uh, I believe it's pronounced gaffer tape, forgive me if I'm saying that wrong, or any other tape. All right, it's a fabric-based tape. It is super duper duper thin. If you're familiar with uh, craft tech, uh, excuse me, not craft tech, Tyvek, you will you will know what the the thickness more or less this is like because it's super thin, like Tyvek. All right, so what we're gonna need is we're gonna need let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six lengths at. The height of your project minus 
about a quarter of an inch because you want it shorter than your project. So six, seven, eight, I think I need eight of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need eight, yeah. So one, two, and I'm going through this entire process with you like this because I want you to see how long it takes to make something like this. Normally, we make our covers with, uh, what have I been doing for 10 plus years? Cardstock, right? Uh, also with Tyvek, which all are good. All are good. However, this is better. Am I telling you that, oh my gosh, we could never make album covers with cardstock or or Tyvek again? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that we found something better. All right, it's available in my shop. It's very affordable. And I think once you try it, you'll never go back, guys. Never. So four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so you need that. And then you need uh, two lengths. Here's another huge plus. Two lengths. The width of your of your album span plus about an inch. Okay. Whoopsie. An inch on each side. So plus about two inches. An inch on each side. All right. So the width, the span of your album plus about an inch on each side. And I'm going to try to get this all in there, but. All right, see that? All right, so I think I, I think I have enough. I don't think I cut it too short. So we're gonna start with the with the um, the spine. We're gonna take our P3 tape and we're gonna remove the tape backing. Remember, this should be approximately a quarter of an inch shorter than the length of your chipboard or the height of your chipboard. You're gonna place this on your chipboard by about half halfway. All right, like so. And what you want to avoid is hangover. All right, and this, I left it like this because I want you to see what you would have to do if you have tape hangover. So it's quite tedious, okay? You don't, you don't wanna to have to deal with that. Now you want to take a second piece and you want to do the same thing on the opposite side of the chipboard. You don't have to overlap. If you do, it's okay. It's not a big deal. It's thin enough that the overlap is fine. So see, mine is not straight, doesn't matter. Now you're going to attach the cover, one of the covers, front or back cover. You're going to leave a little bit of space. And what I mean by a little bit of space, about a quarter of an inch, no more than that. No more than a quarter of an inch. I'm slightly under than a quarter of an inch, which is what I want. But if you were to leave a quarter of an inch, it is okay. So leave some space. I like to leave a little bit more than the thickness of my chipboard. Not just the thickness of my chipboard, a little bit more. Okay, so there's that spacing. Now you're gonna take two, uh, two more of these and you're gonna do the same thing but on this side. All right, you're gonna start by placing the tape in the center or in the spine Burnish it just in that spine area only. Don't burnish it across. You're gonna grab your bone folder, you're gonna drop it in that space, and you're going to burnish. Okay, burnish against the edge of the chipboard for the cover, and then against the chipboard for the spine, or start with the spine and then the cover, doesn't matter. Then burnish it onto the opposite side. All right, I have a little tape hangover. All right here, you wanna cut all the tape hangover off. Okay, ideally you shouldn't have any hangover because if you cut it a quarter of an inch shorter, 
then you don't have uh, tape hangover. But I apparently didn't do such a good job with mine. I wasn't measuring properly. Because I was chatting it up with you guys. All right, so now connect it, all right? No overlapping, you do not, if you overlap, it's not a big deal, but always aim for not overlapping. Remember, you're only sticking it to the spine. It's super sticky to tape, guys. Now you're gonna drop it into the gusset or that space up against the spine. Then you're gonna burnish up against the edge of the cover. All right, and then stick it down. So notice we haven't had to prep any paper hinges. It's very pliable. We haven't had to um, tape anything because it already comes with tape. So it is space saving and it is uh, economical. All right. So now this one, I'm just gonna clean this up a bit. One more. Okay, this is all good. All right, so now I'm gonna go on this side, right here. And you're, now you're gonna stick this down by half, okay? So overlap it by half. Uh, it's one and a half inches wide, by the way. So it's the perfect hinge size, right? When we make our projects, it's the perfect hinge size. Now I will tell you, it's gonna take you some time to get used to working with this tape. If you saw my very first, if you watched my very first video of working with this tape, it was quite comical because it would get stuck to my hands. I'm just moving some stuff out of my way. I don't want my tape to get stuck on any of these embellishments I have to my left. Uh, it was quite comical where almost like, oh my God, I can't work with this tape. But I got, you get, it's like with everything else that's new, you get used to it. Notice how I manipulate it with my knife now. I mean, it was quite the hot mess, guys. <laughs> Let's just say I didn't sell a lot of tape when I first showed it off because it was a mess. <laughs> My demo was so bad. All right, so now you're gonna take this length and you're gonna overlap it by half, right? Remove the tape backing and overlap it by half, just like you did the sides. But it's since then, my tape has been very, very popular. You guys love it. And the best part is that I have repeat Repeat customers, that is the best part of it. That's when you know you got it right. Right? When you have a repeat, when you have repeat customers. When you don't have repeat customers, not so much. Not so much. So now overlap it by half. So look at how easy peasy it is to make a cover. It's so good, guys. So we'll flip it over to the other side because it's so much easier to handle. All right, so this cover is not my layout. My moving parts layout is not 12 by 12. It's slightly under 12 by 12. And the reason for that, because for those of you who do not have P3 tape, you may not want to purchase P3 tape. You will still be able to use paper hinges and tie back and all that good stuff. I don't want you to think you have to run out and get a roll of P3 tape from Paper Phenomenon to make this project, all right? So I cut it slightly under so you can still use 12 by 12 cardstock to make paper hinges or tie back if you choose to do that, okay? So you can absolutely do that. So now what you wanna do, just like an album cover, guys, we're gonna taper or miter, excuse me, on the edges, just like so about about a quarter of an A roughly, quarter of an inch away from the corners of each side. All right, this is not a, a album cover <clears throat> in-depth tutorial. I have a bazillion of those with P3 tape, uh, cardstock, tie back, all of those. But anyway, super simple guys, super duper simple. So now what we're gonna do is, I probably wore the wrong sleeves for this. 
We're gonna start at the corner and we're gonna pull and stick. All right, pull and stick. You wanna start shy, stop, excuse me, shy about a finger width away from the spine, away from the spine. So now move on to the opposite side, pull. You're kind of pulling in this direction, not straight down, okay? And again, you're gonna stop about a finger width away from the spine. And you're gonna be left with this bump. See that bump there? You're gonna be left with that bump. Then you're gonna, right in the center of the spine, you're gonna stick it. Now you're gonna be left with two bumps. You're gonna take those two bumps and work them to the spacer tape. All right. See that? See the two little bumps there? Now you're gonna take those bumps, burnish everything else down, guys. Take those bumps and stick them right in the spacer tape. You can use your finger or you can use your burnishing tool to just pop them right in there. All right, so pop those bumps right in there. And what that this technique does is create extra space so you can uh, allow the tape to stick to the tape that's in the spacer, all right? You want it to stick and you don't want it to float uh, at the space, you want it to stick in there. So doing that gives you the extra space you need to have the tape stick in there and not just float in that spacer section there, okay? You know exactly what I mean because I know it's happened to you. Where the cardstock, the Tyvek, whatever's kind of floating in the spacer, where it sticks but it doesn't stick, all right? Let me know in the comments if you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I promise if you try making your album like this, it'll work, okay? It will stick in the spacer and not float in that spacer area. All right, so see, I've got, look at all of the, I can put my finger on the here, get all this extra room doing it that way I've created. And then just kind of work your way and move those bumps to the spacer and that's where you're gonna stick them down. All right, so pop it in there, boop, boop, done. Fold right there, just to make sure everything is nice and, and attached. And now you're gonna tuck the, the excess tape that has formed around each corner. Or another word I like to describe this as is, you see this tapering action we have here? If you look in closely, the tapering ends where the excess tape ends, right? What you wanna do is follow through on that taper from the corner of the chipboard. So you're gonna taper some more by folding that excess tape to create a better taper from the corner of the chipboard out to the end of the tape, all right? That's what you're doing, all right? And what, in doing that, you're covering the corner of the chipboard. Okay, so essentially you're just tapering all the way to the corner of the chipboard, but not by cutting. Instead of cutting, when we taper, right, you're folding the chipboard. Uh, excuse me, folding the tape. And you can use a tool or your finger, whichever one works best for you. Okay, and then once you do that, you're gonna fold it over, and I clearly did not cut my edge right I have an exposed corner I did a miter a quarter of an inch away I did less but that's okay there's nothing a bit of sharpie can't fix so this is what happens when you don't miter a quarter of an inch away from your corner this is what happens when you miter a quarter of an inch away from your corner All right so you got to be careful Let's see what I did on this side. All right, so now we're tapering, but instead of cutting, we're folding. Okay, so we're folding folding over to achieve a better taper. I almost did the same thing in this corner too. All right, and now I'm gonna fold it over. I did this almost the same exact thing in this corner. You wanna pull 
and stick. Very important. Pulling and sticking is the technique here. And you're sticking. Notice how nothing has popped back up. The tape is on those corners and beautifully attached, burnished around each edge. And you're done. You have made an album cover. Now let me apply a bit of makeup <laughs> to my corner. A little bit of a concealer, if you will. Right here. And that just cleans that up beautifully. And over here. So I was two for two, my friends. Two for, uh, two out of four, I mean. All right, so we've got our cover done. We're finished. Look at how easy that was. No cutting, no cutting paper hinges, no taping, nothing. Just crafting. Right now, super simple. We're going to stick this right onto our cover and done. And there is our project with a cover and all. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to grab my Maker Basics 3 8 inch double-sided tape. I would also love you guys to give my tape a try. If you are out of your favorite tape, I would love for you to go to my shop and give my tape a try and see how you like it. Just get one roll, guys. Get one roll. I have a feeling you're going to be back for more. All right, just give it a try. But wait till you're out. Wait till you're out of your tape. Use what you have. Then you head on over to paperphenomenon.com and you grab a roll and see how you like it. I'm out of stock on a couple of the widths, but I believe I still have the 3 8 inch, which is my most popular size. It's the one I use the most. All right, here we go. Now let's do this side as well. I love it when I can show you guys a project that has uh, pictures in it. That really helps to, so you guys can see what these projects are all about. All right, actually getting our photos in it. I think this makes the most perfect addition to our mini stories theme that we've been doing lately, right? with the smaller albums. This is not smaller in terms of size, but still in terms of how many pictures you can get in here. This would make a perfect gift. And I made this with you all from start to finish. And it was pretty quick, all right? For a project like this, I have to say, from start to finish, guys, less than six hours. I have been making this with you here. I haven't done anything off camera that I can remember. All right, so let's make sure we get the right one on the correct side. I don't want to screw this up. All right, because I will be very mad at myself. Now, the reason why I did not use glue here is because just in case, you know, I have to pull something up, I want to be able to do so with undo. I don't want to be kicking myself and saying I should have used tape instead of glue because you cannot undo with glue. You can only undo with double-sided tape. All right, so let's remove that tape backing. And now we're going to stick this down. So this is our, the layout that goes on the left-hand side. Whoopsie, whoopsie, whoopsie. No, don't do that. You want to be, you have an eighth of an inch border all the way around. So make sure you get that nice and attached. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh my gosh, so pretty. You know what I love about this too is that you can stand it up and display it. That is amazing, okay? You can stand this up and put it on display. All right, second side or the opposite side right here removing that tape backing exposing all that stickiness and 
Then we get to decorate our cover. Got to grab some papers. Make sure you line it up so that they line up really well. All right, you want all of these. Um, oh, whoopsie, I was putting it right on the spine. Oh my goodness, did you see that? Oui, Kathy, you love looking for trouble. I was putting it on the spine. Oh my gosh. So you want everything to line up as best you can. All right, lovely, 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 lovely. We can even put a nice little piece of decorative paper there if we want to or not. We don't have to. You know I'm gonna. All right, let's open this up. Whoopsie, and press down. Make sure we get a really, 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 really good stick. All right, we don't want that coming up at all. And there you have it. So, and you can put it on display. How fun is this? Oh my gosh, I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. This is the project, guys. There it is. How long have we been doing moving parts for? Over a year. Over a year. And I've showed you in an album form how to get these all in an album and now in a folio. Uh, what I call these are page folios where we take a page from a project and make a folio out of it. So this would... This one fits in so many categories. This fits in the page folio category. This fits in the uh, mini stories, uh, mini stories category, and in a layout category. Once again, let's take a look at the inspiration layout. All right, so this is what you get with a twelve by a basic twelve by twelve layout. Uh, this one dimensional or one layer, right, type of uh, memory keeping display here right and then with the moving parts you get oh hello wrong screen with moving parts you get the same look right but you get lots of layers where the parts move and you can house so so many more opportunities for photos house more photos this creates more opportunities for photos and it's just perfection guys absolute perfection and I just I love it I love it so much fun for you know pulling things out so I just I love it it turned out so so pretty so now we're gonna pick out some paper for the cover and we're gonna finish this up all right so I have a couple of options here for paper okay and I'm going to talk, walk you through what I'm going to do here. All right, so let's close that. And I love this for here. But I don't want to cut into this. It's going to cut right there and across. And not good, guys. Not good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to piece this together. This is going to be a good lesson for you guys on using papers that are smaller. All right, so let's say you had eight by eight paper and you wanna cover this giant thing. You can, all right, by piecing. And this is gonna be a good lesson on piecing, okay? So just, I forgot what size this thing is. Um, so I'm gonna go for, okay. All right, so we're gonna do this. All right, so I get this beautiful image down here that I want. I'm going to do the top portion. And I need, so I'm gonna measure and cut the, my piece of paper to fill in this space right here, all right? Fill in this space, so I've got two and, what is this, two and five eighths of an inch. And you can do a couple of options. You don't have to do this one. I got this one out so you can see that that will work as an option as well. Um, what you don't wanna do here is overlap. Okay, you don't wanna overlap here because if you wanna add a piece of decorative paper to kind of bridge the gap, then overlapping would not be good, okay? So let's see what this looks like. We may not love this, right? But we may. 
Oh, I love this. I'm loving this. Loving it, loving it, loving it. My paper is quite warped here, this side. Love that. All right, we can also, to, we can use this one to bridge the gap. Do a little quarter of an inch stripe. I love stripe on stripe. This may not be your thing, but it is my thing. As long as it looks good. I don't love stripe on stripe if it doesn't look good, right? But if it looks good, absolutely. Let's see. And I'll tell you what I mean by stripe on stripe in just a minute. Oh yeah, I like that a lot. I'm gonna use this for my spine. And then, because we cut off, so I brought a second piece of paper out because I wanna show you that if you cut this off right here, you could put that, you could do your spine, right? This part that folds over and kind of clean that up. But I feel like this is more interesting, all right? Then we can take this piece now and cut it, right? And still use this piece. Move over. You can actually do this. All right, we can still use this here or anywhere else, right? It's a great element. Why not put it to use? So this gives you another embellishment. For the cover, I love a non-dimensional embellishment. So this is right up my alley. I do not love a cover that has a bunch of three-dimensional things on it. It's just not my thing. All right, so we're gonna have a bit of the spine, but look, we can still have the look of that paper there, see? And that's flat. So we shall use this, my friends. And then for the back, I mean, absolutely, the possibilities are endless for the back. I'm thinking I wanna use the, the paper that has all the cameras on the back. Oh my gosh, this would be adorable on the back. This one, let me cut that up. So this one, I'm cutting it just full size. All right, and by the way, I'm cutting the paper here at 11 and a quarter by 11 and a quarter. This yellow one as well. Okay, oh, this will look nice on the back. And then we'll we'll measure the spine and I'll show you how I do that. Sorry, my chair is squeaking everywhere. Let me just get situated so it won't squeak anymore. Can you do a signature cut here and then put some tucks? Yes, but I'm not doing that. I want a nice plain background uh, cover. I don't want any fuss on my cover. So I'm not doing any of that. But can you? Absolutely, you absolutely can. All right, that is up to you how much fuss you want on your cover. So let's put some tape on this. And uh, for videos, I normally use glue just to speed up the process. But this is for a gift and I don't want any warping. And I prefer tape, so I'm taking my time. Okay, I'm taking my time with this. So get this done. All right, and then tape here. Hopefully my paper will straighten out and get its act together, right? <laughs> All right, and then here. These pieces are small enough that I can tape these, that I can put some glue on these, so I'll be fine with glue there. Do this, remove the tape backing, and then let's stick this on. Right here. All right. Now I'm gonna get this on nice and straight. No inking, guys, for me. Um, I'm going to go an eighth of an inch from the bottom and an eighth of an inch from the side. 
over here on my right hand side. All right, and that is working out beautifully. Perfect, look at that, how pretty. So I'm gonna use glue for this because it's a much, much smaller piece. Yes, I would love to give this a little bit of ink, but no inking for me. Just a teeny bit around the perimeter. You know, not too much, not too much. Teeny bit. What's important here is for this side over here, right hand side to line up because this side, it's gonna get a spine. All right, so it's important for that to line up. Oh, let's see. I'm thinking about using, where are you? What did I do with you? I had a piece of black and white stripe somewhere around here. Where is it? I wanna see what it looks like. How quickly I misplace things, huh? So quickly. Ah, here it is. Yeah, I love that. Okay, I can live with that. I can live with that. You can do a bolder stripe if you want it. Okay, up to you guys. Because this paper was warped on the bottom already, and I guess it's the way I had it in my drawer, that's why I didn't want to use the glue. I didn't want to add to the warping issue. Okay, that's the reason why. Oh, we could oh, we could have also done a border. Mm, didn't think about that. I didn't see if any of my borders would fit here. They're too short anyway. I only have the eighth inch, the eight inch borders. That's all right. I'll live. Now let's put the back paper on. And for the back paper, again, threw it somewhere on the side of my desk and managed to misplace it. All right, I found it. All right, so now for this back piece, This one has that same warping problem that my, because of the way I guess I had it in my drawer. So I'm gonna try the glue and see what happens. Look at me. Ah, uh, living on the wild side over here. So uh, these pieces are really important guys to get nice and straight. Otherwise, when you put your spine on, you could run into a little bit of trouble. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I run into trouble all the time. <laughs> all the time. And I've been making albums for a long, long time. All right, so you will run into trouble. All right, it will happen, no big deal. I may give these corners a little bit of an ink because I just, a little bit's not gonna kill me. Will not kill me, guys. Oh, so nice. And let me, I'm gonna tell you one more thing I love about the P3 tape. For this wrap spine that we're going to do, I wanna show you how I measure my spine. I use a a tape measure because it's flexible inch I like to overlap an inch and then around the bend right around the bend and then another inch so I'm cutting my paper at three inches so that's what I use to measure out my spine I don't make it tight all right so I'm gonna cut this at three inches by the height of my, the rest of my papers. 
make sure I get that exactly right. And I'll test it. It's, I need to go just a little bit shorter. Okay, let me check the back. Oh, for the back is fine. I guess like I piece the papers together in the front. So it's a little bit off in the front, but I can live with that. See, I'm a little down here on this side. But I'm going to just get rid of a teeny bit. All right, now for my spine, I use tape. I There's no if ands, or buts about it. Tape, 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 tape. All right, this is a must for the spine. Take your time, put your strips of tape on there, and just enjoy the process, okay? You cannot use glue on the spine. And I say cannot, and I know that's strong. I know people will disagree with me, but listen, you can't use tape. Use double-sided tape. The way that the, the spine works with the opening and the closing, the opening and the closing, mm, glue not so good. Your spine is going to crack, okay? Glue dries stiff. It dries stiff. And your spine is going to crack, all right? So, sorry if that's not the popular answer, but in my experience, and I have a lot, it will crack. All right, double-sided tape for the reasons uh, are the follow for the following reasons. Okay, so an inch from the edge, not from the paper, from the edge. If you want this to be nice and straight, you need to measure, guys. And I'm going to use my T ruler because it's just easier for me. Right. Forgot how much my T ruler measures. About an inch and an eighth, so I'm just gonna come off by a teeny bit. I'm gonna grab my pencil. My pencil that I, I took from Faith that our my my friend Quickie sent Faith some pencils from Canada. Thank you, Quickie. I, I took one. And there's going to be some wiggle of my chair. My chair as of late has a lot of racket. And it's because I broke a wheel off. And I like my chair. I don't want to get a new chair. So we have to deal with the squeaking until I guess I fall off. And then I'm like, okay, Kathy, you got to break. You got to buy a new chair. So sorry about the squeaking, my friends. If I have it just so, it behaves. All right, let's focus here. So we're going to stick this on nice and straight right on that pencil line so I don't have to deal with the pencil line, right? You must, for this technique, my friends, open your album. So notice I only took the tape off by, you know, a few. I'm going to take the rest of it off, but do not stick it down yet. Hold on. Unless you've made an album cover with me and you know exactly what we're going to do next. All right, so I'm going to remove the rest of my tape because I'm hoping that I, I did it really good and my tape is gonna line up on the other side. <laughs> All right, but I have a solution if it doesn't. You're going to open your album like this. See this right here? I don't have it straight open. I do not have it really folded. I have it a slight angle here. That is how you're gonna stick things down. Okay, that slight angle. And you're going to, I lined, I lined it up with the other paper and then you're gonna stick it down at, in, in that position. Okay, in that position with the angle. And again, what you're doing is creating a little additional room here so that when, you close your paper will not crack because you have a little bit of extra space in there and that's what's important guys okay very very important and another thing i want to tell you that i love about the p3 tape is this when you cover your spine when you cover your album in cardstock your spine is already really stiff 
all right? Really stiff. With the P3 tape, it's kind of kind of wobbly, all right? A little bit loose. When you put this wrap on, it's just the perfect amount of structure that it needed to create a beautiful album cover. And I just love that. So there it is, guys. Now you're gonna take a piece of black. You can do black, red, uh, any contrasting color that you want. I'm gonna do black because I'm just, I like, I like the black on the front and the back. I'm gonna try two sizes here, more bolder one and then a thinner one. All right, so you can try whichever one you want. Because I have a pretty thin one there, I'm gonna go with a bit of a bolder border. Oh, love that already. I don't need to do anything else. We'll get one more for the back. I like my my spine piece to be wider in the back, so that's why I cut mine at three inches. If you like that same exact inch on the back side, then you want to cut a little different. And I'm gonna probably put this there, not at the top. Love, love, love that. Okay. All right, so glue for this. And we're done, my friends. We are done. It's gorgeous. I hope that you guys try the p3 tape i seriously you're not going to regret it if you've used p3 tape i would love for you guys to chime in in the comments down below and give your opinion on p3 tape whether it's not whether it's opinion that i love or not hey it is what it is right but i really think that we're going to get excellent feedback on p3 tape because it's that good guys that good So nice, that just finishes it off beautifully. I am gonna get a little bit fancy. And you can put two little uh, eyelets, and uh, not eyelets, brads if you want to here, faux brads. Stick those, cut the legs off and just stick them on. Right here, boom and boom. That'll be just lovely. And um, yeah, that's it. And now this one here. Look at that, how perfect. And done. Done and done. You can add a closure to this if you want to. I was going to add a closure, but I just, if you want to put it on display, I think without a closure it is better. So that is entirely up to you guys. But listen, this is not going to be the last one that I do of this. So maybe the next one will have a closure. I already got a request for this size of moving parts. Shelly, I saw your comment. All right, so we shall see. But look at this, how darling, how darling is this? So I will be taking two little brads, cutting the legs off and sticking it here with glossy accents just to finish that off. But look at this, how beautiful. Super simple, guys. Moving parts, uh, I have so many of these examples for you guys. We've been doing moving parts for a year now, okay? So you have so many working with the layouts and converting them into these moving parts. We've even done in two albums now where we're just, we have moving parts one and moving parts two. Um, I have the moving parts one album here. We've even done it in an album form right here where we took layouts these are eight and a half by 11 and they all just open up and do all sorts of fun 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 things there's a final review on the on this album on youtube uh, so check out those videos i also may put a um a border here so you'll see that in the final review if i add a border to it or not but we're done with this my friends absolutely done i can't wait to give this as a gift it's gorgeous I hope you guys love it. Let me know what you think about it below uh, and if you're making one of these, all right? So moving parts, could be a mini stories, so many things you can do with this. That's it, it's perfection. This is Kathy with Paper Phenomenon and until next time.